So here's the Port 02 Mark II out of its case. Um, it's plugged in and turned on. The two boards are connected. It seems not to power on, though in fact I found that the motor was turning, but the power LED was not coming on and there's no sound. So one of the first things I did is Third Island made a video saying, oh, if you've got no sound on one of these, replace these four specific capacitors. I replaced those four and that didn't fix it. I've completely recapped this board, I've partly recapped this board and I'm now getting more sensible readings for the DC voltage at the pins of the various op amps and so on. However, I still don't have the power light on. So I was wondering why, for instance, I'm getting power on this little integrated circuit here, but I wasn't getting power, for instance, on these uh, three op amps here. And what I've found is if I push this LED here, you see these meter LEDs briefly flash and then the power comes on where my left thumb is, I'm wiggling it. You see that that LED is now coming on. Probably not going to be close enough to see, but trace here is actually lifting off the printed circuit board there. If I connect like the negative clip of my multimeter to say the casing of one of the faders which is connected to ground and then where the power is inputting onto this printed circuit board I you know find my nine volts able to trace up to this chip that is receiving power and then it's sort of stopped here and I think that where it's passing by these legs of these four LEDs is actually part of how it's getting to the rest of the system so that's why I'm not getting power to any of the op amps and that's why I'm not getting any sound. I don't know if the light's catching it right, but I've scraped away the green conductive paint here. I haven't actually disoldered that LED that I was wiggling. Hopefully it comes up on the camera, but I can very clearly see that that track is broken and lifted. So can you see that on that side it's beginning to lift as well? I'm not sure that the track is actually broken, but if I disolder that then I'm sure what we would see is that the um, copper track is lifted away from the circuit board underneath. This is what I've opted for, little jumper wires. It's important when you do something like this that you check your work and you do actually have electrical continuity. So these probes are attached to my uh, multimeter. You can hear that when there is a complete circuit, which on this meter is anything below 50 ohms, then it beeps. So let's check this one first of all. So that's fine. This one to here. That's fine. Let's make sure we've got a contact from here to here. And you can also double check and we know that's connected to that. So that works. Then because of this T-junction in the part of the track underneath, then it should also connect to here. You can see this little white clip here. There's the corresponding one. That one's broken off. So that's possibly why that's become loose in the first place. Um, that clip stopped doing its job. Pressure's been put on that at some point, and that pressure has actually uh, damaged the printed circuit board on the other side. I might put some two-part glue on the base of that so that this white piece of plastic is more stable. I turned it on and I was like, oh great, the power LED is coming on, so that's worked. <laughs> and loads of smoke started coming out of here. Um, I don't want to go too far with this, but let's see. Can you see the smoke? Yep, yeah, so I, I made a stupid mistake. You can see I've just uh, desoldered one end of this little jumper wire. I had connected it to this pin here. Usually if a pin goes to a large-ish area, you see there are these bigger areas um, of uh, copper. Typically those are ground and <laughs> I connected it there. It was meant to be connected one pin over. I think I was saying earlier that 9 volts is too much for an LED. It'll, too much current will go through it and then that'll create heat and that'll burn out the, the diodes. So usually there's um, a resistor perhaps on the other side of the leg so that when you hear pull down resistor, that's what it means. It's like, right, there's an LED, it would get fried by nine volts. So I'll put this resistor in and therefore the, the actual voltage across the LED is lower than nine volts. But that LED was getting the whole nine volts because one leg was um, the nine volt power supply and the other leg was ground. That LED, I assume, is toast now. 
all the work that I was hoping to save myself by doing this repair in this way, I've screwed, I've still got to dig out an LED if I don't have the right size and I've got to order one in. And why was that? Just, just stupidity. Like, <laughs> I didn't look carefully about where I was soldering and I attached that to the wrong pin. So be aware. I'm in manual focus mode, so I don't know how clearly you can see that, but I removed the burnt out LED and you can see that the track underneath both pins of the LED has come away completely. For that reason, maybe you can see I've kind of traced this track going into one pin of the LED back the way using permanent marker. So I know it passes through this point and it's coming into the board on this pin here. Because the track here is so poor, what I've opted to do is connect it all the way down here with a longer wire. That other pin is going to now the correct pin of the op amp. And um, I've also got this jumper going to that point, which is then connected to all these down here via T junction. You can't quite see under here. Um, so yeah, I've gone back and uh, tested all of that. Continuity is okay. I did have a replacement LED. It was roughly the right size. I had a bit of an issue there where really only one of the legs was long enough to come through. And what I've done is I bent that over slightly. So that should give that a little bit more stability if it's knocked again. Um, the other one was too short. It was really only just poking through the PCB. So what I've done is run uh, the other end of that cable through to the other side. So I've actually, sorry, that's not gonna work because of, well, all this time I've been making videos, not realizing that I could tap on the screen and get it to refocus. You can see, that's where the solder point is actually. It's on this side of the board, which is unconventional, but I felt like it was better to do that than to have to wait another few days for LEDs with like longer legs to come through. So fingers crossed that is now fixed. And I'm relieved to say that does seem to have worked this time. You can see that the LED is constantly lit. And now if we press play on the cassette player, and you can see that the meters are responding to the audio on that tape. So we may not be completely out of the woods. I've still got some more testing to do. That's it largely reassembled now. I say largely because <laughs> I forgot to put in the shielding for the mixer. But it all works. Left to right. Left to right all works. Um, this one. Only thing I've noticed feels like track one is a little bit quieter, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to need to put this back inside anyway, but I'll try and figure out, although they're not annotated on the printed circuit board, which of the trim pots is the playback level and adjust that using a calibration tape. But apart from that, you know, that's pretty much it working, I think.